Butler brings back every player of significance from a year ago, but again, a little bit thinned out by injuries. They do add Gross, the grad transfer. Also, an impressive-looking freshman, Jaden Taylor, number 13, from Indianapolis. It is Houston in white. It is Butler in navy blue, and it is Houston with the opening lineup, opening tip of the ball game as we take a look at the ace hardware starting lineups. And an early whistle just 12 seconds in. We'll start with the Butler Bulldogs who have not made any of the last three NCAA tournaments and they are looking to change their fortunes. Again, keep an eye on Gross and a loss to Michigan State, 15 points and eight rebounds. And they've got a very experienced point guard in Aaron Thompson. And they do the job keeping Houston off the glass on the first trip. Well, Gross picked up a foul the first possession of the game going against Fabian White Jr. And they went right back to him, see if they could pick up another one. The Houston starting five, led by Sasser, as we mentioned, but I know Tuesday night of the game we had when they beat Virginia by 20, Tajay Moore impressed you as much as anybody. Tajay Moore is an outstanding defender, spectacular athlete. They throw a lob to him, his head is above the rim. Bryce Golden at the five spot being guarded by Reggie Cheney. Loose ball to the Cougars. And here comes Sasser. Help was waiting on that drive, and Chuck Harris just lost it, trying to figure out which way to go with it. Fabian White, who has been shooting the three ball more this year, and he knocks it down. And now Reggie Cheney has gone to the bench with some sort of an injury it appears and we saw this in the virginia game he had his left hand taped he has been dealing with an ongoing left hand issue that knocked him out of the game for a while tuesday against virginia and jay is on the bench in the first minute of this one well yet kelvin sampson and his staff able to go to josh carlton who transferred in from yukon an excellent rebounder mobile good defender and he rolled his ankle not once but twice in the Virginia game. Didn't practice Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. But is in there. Great double. And a turnover. This is what Virginia saw Tuesday night. Just a swarming defense. And Houston may from time to time make a defensive mistake. But because they play so hard, they can overcome it. You know, one of the keys is going to be what's Butler going to do when they throw out of a double team or, or two guys on the ball when they're in ball screens. Sasser keeps the dribble alive. Good oh. pass. White for another three. How about that? Fabian White Jr. with a back-to-back -back threes to begin the ball game. Well, Kelvin Sampson certainly likes to see him hit those shots. He doesn't want to see Fabian White rely on it. Because one of the things that, uh, that that perimeter shooting does is take him away from the basket where he's even more effective on the offensive glass. Houston needed overtime in their season opening win over Hofstra. They were down 13 with eight and a half to go, and that one roared back to win. They blew out Rice, and then again, they just muzzled Virginia. Beat him 67-47. This one is short from White. Moore runs it down. Marcus Sasser called that as soon as the rebound was grabbed, and that's what he's really good at is that floater. But Sasser would say, hey, let's go pick and pop again and give Fabian White another opportunity. And one of the things about Houston, hey, if they get a good shot and miss it, they can go get the rebound. They rebound offensively really well. And doesn't this remind you of Tuesday, Jay? Houston came out and threw some punches at Virginia in the first couple of minutes of that one. Yeah, but they never stopped throwing yeah. punches. They punched them the whole game. Taylor. Misses the three for Butler and a foul on the floor going against, I believe, Josh Carlton of Houston. As Kelvin Sampson looks on, the eighth-year head coach at Houston, 32 years overall, 670 wins. When he talks about last year's Final Four team and all the changes in this year's team, he says, quote, I want this year's team to run its own race. They don't dwell a lot on the success they had a year ago. No, and, and you know, their culture is of working hard, defending, rebounding. But Kelvin Sampson, when he played sports in high school and college, did all the leadership positions. He was a point guard, he was a quarterback, he was a catcher, you know, did all the things where, where you have to be the leader. I would have said big guy, because <laughs> you really have to be a leader as a big guy, but yeah. I'm giving a break to the guards here and saying point guard. Throw him a bone every now and again, as insincere as it came off. <laughs> <laughs>
Three minutes in, it is 8 nothing for the Cougars. They are ranked 12th in the nation. White back to Sasser. Back to White. Good extra pass. More baseline. Carlton got it, and it is 10 nothing Cougars. Making that extra pass and then the baseline drive by Moore to get it to Carlton. And Carlton just shows he's got really good feet. Good catch, good feet. A lot of big guys travel when they get that kind of pass. And of course, there's a guy who came in from UConn, very familiar to the Cougars program, having played against them in recent years. And now again is a another upperclassman. Gives them a lot of experience, great offensive rebounder, and just enough offense here and there. Butler is going to have to throw out of those ball, ball screens a lot faster unless they can turn a corner. And another empty possession for the Bulldogs. 0 for 4 with a couple of turnovers. Tajay Moore. And the rebound down to Chuck Harris. The sophomore from Ashburn, Virginia comes in at 15 points per game for Butler. Chuck Harris led Butler in scoring last year. He's a solid player. His percentages haven't been great thus far. And there you see Tajay Moore got blown by and still blocked that shot with great athleticism. Houston doesn't give up on any play. Moore, a transfer from Cal State Bakersfield, where he was their leading scorer the last couple of years. And Marcus Sasser, three, four times a game, makes plays that make you say, that guy looks like a pro. He is a pro. That's an NBA. Whether Leonardo DiCaprio could have fit on it. All right. Kate Winslet could have moved over a little bit. And he survived. Take a camera with you tomorrow, and let's uh, let's find. Let, then we can all find out. I'll report back. Yeah. You just might not want to do it in the Elvis suit if you're trying to stay low key about it. Elvis lives. <laughs> Look at the hustle there in the defensive end by Carlton, but I think they got him for a foul. Val Jordan played at Butler, an assistant coach at Butler, also an assistant at Michigan and Iowa. And, uh, he's trying to get them back to the tournament. They are picked sixth out of 11 teams in the Big East. And again, they are old. They are experienced. They had a lot of trouble last year scoring. And they're having a lot of trouble so far in this one scoring, to say the least. Well, yeah, Val Jordan was an all-conference guard two times at Butler when he played for the Bulldogs. That was back, I think, it was the mid Midwest City League. Yeah. MC, MCC, the Midwest City Conference. I think. <laughs> a conference that they're no longer in. Yeah, it didn't, yes. didn't survive. Not that the Midwest Cities aren't doing well, but <laughs> everything's still okay there. I think it was a Midwestern City, something like that. A little give and go, and look at the cutting by everybody. Kyler Edwards, the transfer from Texas Tech, missed the runner. But look at the motion and the movement and the quality of the shot attempts that Houston is getting. And how hard they cut. You know, so when you're closing out, they give you a shot fake, drive it, and really puts you in not only into rotation, but it puts you into scramble. Some great players have moved on from Houston. Quentin Grimes, who was the American Conference Player of the Year again a year ago. Dejan Giroux and others, but they have reloaded with transfers. And although, like many coaches, Kelvin Sampson says they're still learning our system, we're still learning how to all, you know, play as a unit, they look like a mature being, don't they? A mature team where all of the pieces of the puzzle are already fitting very, very nice. Well, there are a lot of substantial bodies out there. That's the third three for Fabian White Jr. He's looking like Steph Curry out there right now. He is feeling it. Came into the game one for five of the season from three. And he's three for four already today. 17 to nothing. More than six minutes in. When Houston puts two on the ball, and they just did, you've got to pass out of that and attack. That last possession before this one, Bryce Golden had a great opportunity. This Jair Bolden, who transferred in from South Carolina. He's the, the best shooter on this Butler team. And they've got to get him even more opportunities because he can knock shots down. Yeah, that is his 12th made three in 23 attempts on the season and finally Butler breaks the ice. White now down to the post. Kick. And another good look. This time it is Jawan Roberts who misses the three, but they're on the glass as they always are and Fabian White putting up big numbers. Well, that's why you want him down by the basket because Fabian White is a really good offensive rebounder. Got a number of good offensive rebounders, but the best offensive rebounding unit for Houston is their second unit. When you bring in Roberts and Carl, 
because Roberts is their best offensive rebounder. The shot comes from the right side. Fabian White was, well, watch him. He'll get on the left side and position himself. Got into a little hand fight there and was able to get that offensive rebound and stick back. They do a great job of positioning. And oftentimes when a shot comes from one side, the wing or down below to the corner, the ma overwhelming majority of the time, if it's missed, it's going to come off to the other side. And Reggie Cheney, just like the game against Virginia on Tuesday, left with a, a, you know, having aggravated that left-hand injury and then later on came back into the game as Roberts couldn't keep it in bounds, so it's over to Butler. It was a, an unusual game Tuesday against Virginia in the sense that of the eight Houston players who played, Four of them had to leave the game at one point or another with either an injury or cramping, but they all are okay and are playing here in this one. Jamal Shedd on Bolden. He's going to have to stay with them. And Thompson is fouled by Cheney. Aaron Thompson again, a very experienced guard out of Glendale, Maryland, 50 year senior for the Bulldogs. Aaron Thompson is another lefty. Does not shoot it particularly well, but he's the only player on this Butler team that's got NCAA tournament experience. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. There was a time, of course, and it's not that long ago, when Brad Stevens was the coach, when they were perennial participants in the NCAA tournament, and of course played in the NCAA championship game in back-to-back -back years in 2010 and 2011. Christian David into the game now for Butler, number 25 in blue, and he turns it over. Sasser, and good luck slowing him down when he gets going, but I don't think we could hear the whistle, yeah, they but they called a foul up top. Yeah, he got, he got hit. It was actually a pretty smart foul because it makes him take the ball out of bounds, takes the bucket away. A year ago, Sasser averaged just over 13 points per game, shot 38% from the floor, 34% from three. If the early going is any indication, those numbers are going to get a huge boost. They go over the top to Jawan Roberts on the lob and a foul at the rim. Houston's just in attack mode. And they're especially in attack mode on the defensive end. Jamal Shedd putting it up. And then Malloy just makes contact with Roberts to, as he's backing up. Well, Roberts at the line, a 6'7", a redshirt sophomore from the Virgin Islands. And he has had huge rebounding numbers in the first three games, especially the opener. He had 15 rebounds against Hofstra and has 31 boards through the first three games of the season for the Cougars. But he is their best rebounder. And that's awfully nice to be able to bring your best rebounder off the bench. You know, you, when you hit the deck in this game, if you do it in the lane, do you think it's softer because of all those flowers? No. <laughs> These are the things you think about while we're doing a game on live national television. Well, I think about it other times. <laughs> Folks here in Las Vegas uh, have done a great job hosting the Maui Invitational. Now, Jim Maui Invitational moved here uh, because of COVID issues and concerns uh, out of the island. So everybody hoping they'll be back in Maui next year. But for now, it is in Vegas here at the Michelob Ultra Arena as Roberts is called for a foul. 17-point lead in the early going for the... And, uh, the fried chicken was off the charts good. Really incredible. And again, a very strong uh, Hawaiian presence, which we have come to learn a, a lot about here in Las Vegas. Las Vegas referred to often as the ninth Hawaiian island, and Las Vegas the host of the Maui Jim Maui Invitational this year. Bolden with his second three, so he's got all six points for Butler. Yeah, he's been the offense, and that was deep. That is some deep range for Jire Bolden. Leads him in three-point percentage, field goal percentage overall. Averaging 12 a game in just 21 minutes per game off the bench. Tremon Mark, his first action of the season is in this game today. A shoulder injury. You can see he's got that left shoulder tape. That is his shooting shoulder. But he is back in there. And another option on the wing for Kelvin Sampson. A super talented lefty. And Kelvin Sampson said he might have been their best player before the injury. In the exhibition games, he was fantastic. And you see right away his first play makes something happen on the offensive end. And he really turns an eight-man rotation into a nine-man rotation. They got a lot of pieces, a lot of versatility. 
A lot of talent. You know, we barely mentioned a Kyler Edwards. That's him with the ball. He has it blocked. He had five threes and six tries against Virginia on Tuesday. You and I both saw him a lot at Texas Tech. He's a terrific pickup for the Houston program. Boy, what a good defensive job by Tremont Mark there. Didn't go for that shot fake by Bolden. Stayed down. Make him, it made him take a tough two. Really good. Six different Cougars have scored already in the first 10 minutes of the game. Houston shooting 56%. Coming out for the high ball screen now. Edwards, who's an excellent offensive player with the throwback. Boy, White just keeps getting the opening from three. Ooh, and a hard foul. If that's on Roberts, it's his second. Now watch Tremont Mark here. Now this doesn't sound like much, but he closes out doesn't go for that shot fake and then forces Jair Bolden into a fadeaway tough two. took away the three didn't go for the shot flake It's the beauty of having depth to pick up a couple fouls you can make adjustments and still Be effective Mentioned this in the first game Calvin Sampson coached against Butler both when he was at Oklahoma and Indiana He's got a world of respect for the tradition the Butler way the Butler Tradition of the way they play basketball. He did not come into this game taking the Bulldogs lightly at all well, He knew I'm a bold guy. he can really shoot him man. And Tajay Moore was a little bit late getting there, but you got to give Bolden all the credit You can say hey the defense needed to be better That's just on the microphone here in Las Vegas at T-Mobile Arena Dave O'Brien Sean Farnham also on the call great to see Dickie B back doing what he loves as he's got some time between his chemo treatments he's gotten the stamp of approval from his doctors to come do the game and i think we all understand how incredibly fired up he's going to be on the microphone tomorrow night meanwhile jair bolden with a two so he's got all 11 butler points he's the guy they need to guard i'd say <laughs> he's not the best in the business for nothing folks tajay moore for three you put together the outside shooting potential the athleticism, he's got a chance to have a big year for the Cougars. Well, defensively, he's going to have a big year. Anything he adds on top of that. But that was all set up by Kyler Edwards in his middle penetration. And an Aaron pass out of bounds. Houston does a really good job of moving from side to side. But the little side ball screen, the middle penetration, then Chuck Harris gets caught sort of in no man's land. And you have to move as the ball moves when you've got a defender there a teammate there You got to get back out to that corner three You can't wait till the ball is caught Good pass immediate double on white But a foul as Bryce Golden got in there with a little bit too much enthusiasm and he gets called for the foul When Houston plays out of the post they're even better you get it in there Fabian White's a good passer. He can dribble out of a double team if they come double they can reverse the ball and really attack. And really four around one with this lineup, and the one can even step out as we have seen from White. Sasser. He is so comfortable dribbling, crossing over, and then pulling up on a dime. He's got everything. I mean, you know, earlier on in his career, you, you'd scout Houston and say, well, he's a catch and shoot guy. Automatic of his feet are set. But now he can shoot off the dribble, step back. He's got a, a, a fan. He's a terrific driver, and I think he's an underrated defender. I think he's a really good defender. He and Kyler Edwards can really guard. So Monomark called for a foul. Marcus uh, zoomed in. It still looks like a three, but you know maybe when he took off, you could see a little bit of the black line under his shoe. So take a point off the board. It is 27 to 11 for Houston. Well, you may know this, Dan. Where would where would I go to pick up the Emmy for best performance in a in a comedy? <laughs> nice feed and the bucket for Jaden Taylor, the first player not named Jair Bolden to score for the Bulldogs. Um, let me ask our boss about that. He is in the truck, and I'm sure, and I'm sure they're focusing hard on that. I, I'm getting some props right now for uh, the Dick Van Dyke guy that I that I laid out there. Maybe we can share the image. You for the physical comedy, me for the straight one. Sasser, who well, he thought about it. Edwards, 
Moore. Edwards. Great what? Passing. Wow. Great passing. And they didn't panic as the clock was winding down. Butler have a, has a little bit of momentum, starting to feel a little bit better about itself. Houston turned it over a couple times. They don't look like a team where guys are still getting to know one another, do they? With some transfers coming in, they look like a well-oiled machine right now. They look like a hard-playing machine, yeah. I know that. They're going to get more well-oiled, but... Well, just on that last exchange, you know, Fabian White switches off, walls up. Terrific shot fake here. Shot fake and drive. Drew two. And then Kyler Edwards, when Ty Gross came over, just dropped it down. That's a lot of help and recover for Butler. And they can't do it. They can do it twice. They can't do it three or four times. That, that was beautiful by Houston. Baby and White. Junior has hit three threes already. He's the high score in the game with 13. Jair Bolden, three threes for Butler. Houston has turned Butler over eight times already in the game. It has turned those eight turnovers into 11 points as the Bulldogs show zone. 2-3 zone. I want to try to get in the gaps of this zone. This is such a good passing team. Not this time. Oh! Wow, Sasser the miss, but Tajay Moore, who just got teed up for hanging on the rim, but Tajay Moore can do things that not very many players in America can do. What a beautiful stick back. And look, I... This is not about the officials. They have to call this. It's in the rule. We just need to change this rule. It's stupid. I mean, that's a beautiful finish. And was there a little bit extra? Yeah, but who cares? That's fantastic. Just gorgeous. He can get above the rim with the best of them, but he just picked up a technical foul for hanging on the rim. So Jair Bolden will go to the line for the Bulldogs. And it's really like, and that's why, look, it's not about the officials. They got to call that. Uh, it's in the rules, and they're, they're, but the rules committee needs to fix that. It's a stupid thing. You know, to have a momentum play, and then we have to go back to free throws to stop the game. It's just dumb. You talked about the offensive rebounding that Houston has and how some of their best guys come off the bench. Jawan Roberts, Josh Carlton. Moore, when you think about rebounding, you tend to think about front court players first. Moore is a guard, but he can be as good of an offensive rebounder as any of them at his house. And he can keep the ball alive, too. And you know, we saw a lot of that with Stephen Crowell in the first game between Wisconsin and Texas A&M. It's not just the one guy that gets offensive rebounds. Well, that's a good idea, but Jamal Shedd was right there and read it perfectly. Shedd. Beautiful passing between him and Edwards and another conversion for the Cougars unselfish, but they're not just unselfish They make the right pass It's one thing to make the extra pass. Sometimes the extra pass is the wrong pass now this, this team makes the right pass Seven assists on 14 made baskets and quite frankly it feels like a lot more than that the way that they have shared the ball so far Yeah, that's surprising. I would have thought it'd be more Bolden is 4-3 of the game. He is the offense for the Bulldogs right now. He's one of those players, Dan, that if you have to close out to him, you've made a mistake, a defensive mistake. He's a no-closeout guy. You've got to stay with him and make these other guys beat you. Two years at GW, then he redshirted as he transferred to South Carolina. One year at South Carolina. This is his second year with Butler. Just a great pass back by Jamal Shedd. Stayed low and you know, Jair Bolden. That now that's Jamal Shed there as that drive is going on the baseline. He's got to rotate over and pick up Bolden. He knows where it's going. So over the last eight minutes or so, the Bulldogs have played the Cougars even. The problem is they were down 17 to nothing at the beginning of the game. Talk about having to dig yourself out of a hole. Yeah, well, that means if you play him even the rest of the game, yeah. you lose by 17. That's right. Everything's contested, yeah. Moore, good luck with that. He does everything out there. He can knock down an, an open three. He's not a great shooter, but he can make shots. And he's got something bothering him, his right hand. He is a lefty, but he was holding his right hand, and he's still kind of shaking it and wringing it out as he goes back on D. Well, as hard as these guys play, you're going to get some bumps and bruises. You know that. 
because their practices are really difficult. That's why the games look a little bit easier for them. Harris lost it, gets it back. And lost it again, at least long enough for a shot clock violation and another turnover. That is big time to get a shot clock violation. This is a hard playing group. Yeah, so not quite as traumatizing. This, this is not true. This is the world we live in. Yeah. So, but I think Spatola's right. I, you know, that shirt is an affront to just shirts. <laughs> so we will not see you in the two things. No, if you'd like to have two of those, I, I'm more than willing to give mine up. <laughs> Throw in your Emmy, and I'll, and I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Baby and White Jr. showing he can score on the inside as well. Well, this is best offensive half of the year. He's already hit three threes. That's 15 points for him in this first half. Career high is 19. What are you looking for if you're Butler? What are you trying to get offensively? You have to to try to get something off the, the second action. Like if you can if you can pass out, but already they're they're down to a short clock. But they haven't been able to pass out if they get two on two playing one, like off of a ball screen situation, you've got to be able to pass out of that and attack. And they've not been able to do that. Houston's able to recover. You gotta punish them for putting two on one. It's just you they haven't had the personnel to do it. Yeah, they, they spent 27 seconds on this possession, not really getting anywhere, just trying to not turn the ball over, find somebody a little open, but they never actually gained an advantage at any point. Yeah, and their defense, they're down a really good player. They're down Bryce Enzi, who got injured in the game against Michigan State, barely played. But he's their best rebounder. May even be their best player. I mean, Chuck Harris is their best scorer, but I'm not sure Bryce Enzi isn't their best player. Sasser. This ball bounces to Shed. Still lots of time for the Cougars, and they'll reset with Edwards. It's amazing. Houston's just so much quicker to the ball. Moore with the up and under, but he can't finish it. Not an up and under. Do we have to have this discussion? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till I say that a guy leaves his feet. Oh! Whoa. This guy's going to lead the country in Sports Center top tens during the college basketball season. And a foul on Golden on a moving screen. Tajay Moore is asking to come out of the game, though. Something is bothering Tajay Moore right now. There's not enough air that high. He's That's why. He's out of air. You get that high, you can't breathe. I mean, his head was above the rim there. Just a fantastic block shot with that left hand by Tajay Moore. What's been the most impressive? The block? That he had, or the the poorly described up and under before. <laughs> the, <laughs> well, he missed that one. Yeah. But his misses his can follow be dunk, his, his follow dunk was great. His follow dunk was great. He had a couple against Virginia. And leaking out ahead of the pack, Taylor with a slam for the Bulldogs. There's no defensive balance on that shot for Houston. One of the rare easy baskets that the Cougars give up. Kelvin Sanson says sometimes you can coach a team and you can know this is as good as they're going to get He said I don't feel that way about this team He says there is room for improvement for this team and Kelvin does not throw out compliments easily So if he says a team this good Still has room to grow. How good might they be by March? Well in the, in the first few games They didn't have Tron mark He's back and and he's a difference maker, but their big guys are going to continue to get better and better And we haven't even seen you know Javier Francis yet Eight different Cougars have now scored. They're up by 21. Taylor almost turned it over. Gross's three won't go down, and a great rebound by Jawan Roberts. Jawan Roberts is their best rebounder, their best offensive rebounder. You just saw why. And he does an equally good job running the floor, and he'll get rewarded with a trip to the line. If you don't rebound at Houston, you are not going to last very long. But that was a power rebound. Went up high. Just was able to knock P.J. Hughes, the freshman, out of the way. Yeah, this is Hughes' first action for the Bulldogs. Again, the injury to NZ has changed some things. Imagine it being Hughes, and this is your introduction to college basketball, having to play against guys like this. Yeah, it's a... It's a rough start, but Hughes has a good body. He's going to be a really good player. Oh, 
Roberts getting some pretty big minutes off the bench. Uh, a number of other Cougars each have picked up two fouls in the first half, but that has not prevented them from rolling to a 23-point lead. Butler trying to lift up this defense, get some cuts to the basket. Instead, Taylor launches a three, and Roberts with another rebound, again holding off Hughes to get it. Hughes had inside position, but Roberts just held him off with one hand, got the rebound with the other. Sasser flying in, has it rejected. Thompson. And Gross is fouled out on the perimeter. A foul on Sasser, and that'll be one and one coming for Gross. And especially, and he, he would have been a very important player no matter what for Butler, but especially if the NZ shoulder injury uh, proves to be serious, Gross is going to have an even larger role for this team. Well, he played really well against Michigan State. He had 15 points, 8 rebounds, which is about what he averaged as a player at Eastern Michigan. But he's a good athlete, runs the floor, can knock down a catch-and-shoot three. Tough Big East. Villanova picked preseason to win it. You can understand why, but look at some of the wins they had against the Big Ten recently. There's some good teams there. Obviously, UConn is good, and Seton Hall looks like a very strong team. St. John's can, can, can beat just about anybody if they play well. A lot of good teams in there. Yeah, St. John's a bucket away from beating Indiana yeah. at Assembly Hall. I mean, the Big East has is, is, uh, really gotten off to a great start. Sasser knocked away off the foot of Thompson. They've still got time. And the first half will come to a close. It started off with Fabian White Jr. raining threes on the Bulldogs. As Houston got out to a 17 to nothing lead, 15 points, 14 to their 20 points. But they, they have to be stronger with the ball and attack anytime they have an advantage situation when they're thrown out of a double team because Houston recovers so quickly. Only two Bulldogs made a field goal in the first half. Bolden had five field goals, four threes, 14 points. And Jaden Taylor made a couple of baskets. That's it. Only two players would have made field goal. Bolden early again in the second half, way off on that one. And if that's the, the quality of shot that Butler is going to get in the second half, this is going to get worse, not better. And... Butler is playing shorthanded. Uh, they don't have Bryce Enzi, and th that is going to make it awfully difficult because he is such a good player. They don't have enough bodies to be able to overcome that. Cheney down low. Muscles his way around Golden, but he missed the layup. Can't get any closer with a better angle. Aaron Thompson kicks it back out. Ty grows for three. Miss a layup, then have an open, give up a wide open opportunity. But one of the few times that Butler has had a wide open shot, and Ty Gross showing that he can knock down a shot from the perimeter when he's open. And here's a positive for Butler that is assist number six already in the game for Aaron Thompson. Houston does a really good job of setting a low cross screen. And take a look here the really nice pass by Thompson. But it's a tough pass. I mean, you have to make that tough pass over and over again. That is not an easy pass to execute. And the third foul on Bryce Golden will send him to the bench, and that'll get D.J. Hughes back into the game. The freshman who played about two and a half minutes in the first half. Getting a crash course in high-level college basketball. Moore and White are both complaining that White was being held, but there's no call. Well, he was held, but... You know, you're not going to get those all the time, especially when you're up by this amount. You know, sometimes the referees take a playoff, too, or miss it. It happens. The winner of this one will play Wisconsin tomorrow in a semifinal. Here with the Maui Jim Maui Invitational. Gross on the drive. And a touch foul there to look like going against White. Butler to windbound from the baseline. Hughes having to go out above the three-point line to catch the inbounds pass. Well, Hughes is physical. Yeah. And he and Cheney were really going at it. 
Gross with a drive. Great control in midair to lay it in. Just went right around Fabian White, who jumped into the air to try to bother that shot, bother that drive. So Gross with all five of the points for the Bulldogs in the second half. Sasser knocks down a three, his first of the game. I think Sasser thought that his arm got hit when he let it go, but he sets his feet so quickly off that little fade action. And he goes from the catch to the release incredibly quickly. Nice split. Thompson gets by Sasser. And that's not something that Kelvin Sampson likes to to see that when your defense gets broken down that easily but Thompson with a really nice drive and then pivot and I thought that was going Butler's way and it is and Cheney's going to come out of the game Kelvin Sampson not happy with his big guys it looks like after that last play where Thompson was able to lay it in both Cheney and White were just taken out of the game but here's where the depth comes in as well as he goes to Carlton and Roberts. Job throwing out of it. Boy, they had PJ Hughes open in there. Shot clock at one. And they don't get a shot off in time. The 12th turnover committed by the Bulldogs. If, if you don't make a great decision when you throw out of a double, whether it's off a ball screen, whether it's inside, whatever it is, whenever there's two Houston Cougars playing one, if you don't make a, a great decision after you throw out of it, they're going to recover and you're going to be in a world of hurt. And that's exactly what happened there. They had P.J. Hughes wide open, missed him. And then all of a sudden they get a shot clock violation because Houston recovers. Edwards looking inside for Carlton. Now Sasser. Roberts forces up a very tough shot. Give Gross credit for his defense there. And now Sasser is called for the foul, his second, trying to pick up a clean steal. You know, one thing, Dan, about Houston, they come out in games so hard defensively. And the opponent, whether it was Virginia that we saw last Tuesday or whether it was Butler tonight in this ball game, you know, when they come after, really come after you, you're not thinking about scoring. You're thinking about surviving. You're not thinking about punching them. If they don't bring that intensity, then all of a sudden, you know, Butler's thinking about, hey, what, what do we do? How do we score? What do we do this? You know, then they start thinking about punching. So, and they got to bring it. They, they can't, have no choice, Houston. They got to bring it every possession. That's, so, that's how they're going to win. So how much of that effort level that they have do you think is just within the DNA of the individual players? And how much of that is that if you want to play for Kelvin Sampson, you better play that hard? I think it's probably more the latter. I don't think anybody, there are very few players that naturally play this hard. And, and it's really hard to play that hard together. And there's an example as Sasser lost the ball, but did a great job diving on the floor to prevent what would have been an easy layup at the other end. Butler is going more toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Cougars, though, recently than they certainly did in the opening minutes of the game. They have improved. But again, they dug themselves a 17-point hole right at the beginning of the game, and that's exactly where it stands right now. Houston, by the way, and it's very early in the season, but it comes into the game ranked fifth uh, on Ken Palm in adjusted defensive efficiency. And they're going to be right around there all season long, you would think. Butler is a underrated as a physical basketball team. You know, they are really physical. They might not look it, but they bump you, chuck you, grab you. And that goes back to... You know, the teams in 2010-11 under Brad Stevens and so on, that, that's been a constant for them, right? Yes. And when they're smaller, they get down, they use their leverage. But I wouldn't I wouldn't feel sorry for Butler. They, they are a physical crew. They can withstand just about anything. Third turnover committed by the Cougars here in the second half. And Sasser called for another foul. That'll be his third. Yeah, it's probably an unnecessary reach there. You might be able to reach behind and knock that away, but 
you just had one called on you and not sure that was the, the way you wanted to go I mean, it's pretty clear he got him right on the arm and sometimes it's when the coach sits down and gets quiet you know you're really in trouble no when the coach gets when they take you out and the coach is quiet you know that you're the best player that's why you're not getting yelled at <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a steal by Moore Shovel pass to Shed, extra pass to Edwards. Good recovery by the Bulldogs in transition. Shed off the glass. Boy, Carlton is something else on the offensive glass, isn't it? And to have both he and Roberts in there at the same time, that's a really good offensive rebounding unit. The both of them can keep the ball alive. About shot by Shed to stay down on that shot fake by Gross. About three quarters of Carlton's rebounds so far this year have been at the offensive end. Good job icing that ball screen to keep it to one side. Gross for three. Wide left. Gross gets it back. Harris wide open. And he buries it. That's the first time he's been wide open in this game. You haven't called out the name Chuck Harris very much no. because they've done a great job on him. He hasn't had many opportunities. Well, some fight in the Bulldogs right now. They've got it down to 14. On a 10-3 run. And that encompasses the second half. Houston has scored only three points in five and a half minutes in the second half. There's a pretty good look for Moore. And it's Butler ball. Well, Butler has been limiting Houston to one shot. And it's been one challenge shot for the most part. And Malloy just hit Kyler Edwards with a big screen up top. Another one. Great pass inside. And Moore with the hard foul on Malloy. Malloy set two really good screens and rolled to the bucket to get that opportunity. So it'll be but they eat one thing the rest That's of their right. lives. What yeah. would they eat? Yeah. And Buzz Williams of Texas A&M said, eggs. And then you followed up with, how would you like those eggs prepared? And he said, scrambled. <laughs> I was like, eggs? Yeah. <laughs> even, the, even the other coach was like, what is he talking about? I thought Randy Bennett of St. Mary's actually had uh, just as good an answer. He said ice cream. Ice cream. Which yeah. sounds like a great idea in the moment, but after like 20 years of ice cream, a guy's got to have some eggs. So, you know. <laughs> well, Kelvin Sampson was the smartest. He said, uh, my wife Karen's lasagna. That's right. He's the one that's going to stay married yeah. the longest as a result of that. <laughs> White is fouled on the cut. What has Butler done better? And they've been much better here in the second half. What are they doing right now? Way more physical uh, on defense. And they've been stronger with the ball on the offensive end. But they haven't. In the first half, they pitched it away. I don't know whether they had 11 turnovers or what. But they pitched it away a lot. And let Houston. They were on their heels the whole time. White can't back Gross down. Sasser back in there. Tough shot. Gross keeps it alive and winds up tipping it to his teammate in Harris. And how many times have you had to say this in the second half for Houston? Tough shot. Yeah. In the first half, you didn't say tough shot very much because that wasn't happening. And Butler's made everything more difficult for Houston in the second half. Golden made four threes in the first half. Not this time. Gross the offensive rebound. Oh, and that would be an unforced error as he rifled it between a couple of teammates. Now Houston has missed a couple of chippies in there. And a Reggie Chaney missed an easy one. But they haven't had many easy looks in the second half. Butler is winning the battle on the glass in the second half as well. And you don't often say that about a Houston team. Well, it's largely because they're mostly defensive rebounds because Houston's missing over and over again. A strong move by White and a foul on Gross. Yeah, it's awfully difficult to, to officiate the post because there is so much banging, but a good job by Fabian White to get into the middle. NBA Wednesday doubleheader comes your way. 
It'll start in Boston at 7.30 Eastern. James Harden and the Nets taking on Jason Tatum and the Celtics. And then Steph and the Warriors hosting the Sixers. Our coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern. Nice to see Brad Stevens yesterday. That is not Brad. No. But it was nice to see Brad Stevens yesterday at Butler's practice. Front office now of the Celtics. Nine years he told us. And I guess it was right after the two yeah. trips. And then he stayed a couple more years. This is his ninth season in Boston. Was the coach, now the president of basketball operations. But was back visiting with some old friends and people within the program as Butler practiced here yesterday. Pretty remarkable career for Brad Stevens. I think he started out before his job at Butler. He's with Eli Lilly. Yeah, the, the, Malloy has been so physical on these screens. It was only a matter of time before he got one called on him, but he was physical and effective. And number three on Malloy will send him to the bench. And bring the freshman DJ Hughes back into the game. Houston running its offense a little better pace right now. That is White's go to move. Start on the left side of the court, drive it into the paint with a running jump hook. First look is into the middle. Kelvin Sampson asking Kurt Smith, why no foul? I mean, there's so much contact. But the easy answer is because we didn't blow the whistle. <laughs> White has tied his career high now with a 19. Hughes underneath just had it taken away by Shed. And then Shed looks off a defender and finishes. Put that on the Jamal Shed highlight reel. That was an easy basket for Butler. I, mean, I always laugh now when I see, and look, it's a no big deal, but when you see Gonzaga listed among the top mid majors in the country, <laughs> and they pump out NBA players yeah. every year. I mean, the last 10 years or so, they're recruiting. I mean, they're there with anybody. Got to the national, well, they've been to the national championship game twice in recent years. Nice feed inside and a foul from behind called on Cheney. And again, the, the quality of shot continues to improve for the Bulldogs, but they still face an 18 point. That was good. That was good. I'm a great dancer. You are a great you. dancer. Uh, I was hoping for Blue Man Group. Can you do, uh, do you have a Blue Man Group? That might be later. There? That yeah. might be later. Look, Dan, I've only got so much time in a day. <laughs> You are a good sport. Now that see that's more that's more your speed. That's more my yeah. That's lampshade on yeah. the head at the end of the night. Basketball lampshade on the head at the end of the night. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis here in Las Vegas, the home of the 2021 Maui Jim Maui Invitational. How'd you feel the next morning after all those moves? Uh, felt fine yeah. actually. Yeah, a lot of Advil. Not a problem. Those guys were amazing, though. Yeah. And it's a really cool theater over at the MGM Grand. Now, producer Eric Mosley uh, putting a lot of things together over the last couple of days, and you uh, being a great sport. Yeah, Eric Mosley, Mike Roig, our director who really over-directed. Talk about over-coaching. <laughs> My goodness. Let your, let your talent yeah. let your talent work. Moore. Boy, Sasser just never stops moving, does he? Difficult to guard, but Aaron Thompson's done a really nice job staying with him. And we haven't seen anything easy for Houston in the second half. Great deflection. Turnover, and at the other end, a block by White. What a recovery. Made possible by Jamal Shedd. You know, Shedd was able to make Harris angle out a little bit and that gave Cheney the opportunity to block that shot box set they just ran that before tried to get a little lob and low post opportunity for Tajay Moore good help there by Bryce Golden shot clock at three shed four three a battle for the offensive rebound as Cheney went after it, but Gross comes up with it for the Bulldogs. Well, Golden grabbed him and got away with it. Thompson for three, and it is 50 to 36 as we near the midway point of the second half. 
Well, Thompson's not a great shooter. He's got limited three-point and free-throw numbers, but well, you give him a wide-open one, he can knock it down. That is his first made three on the young season. This is the fifth game of the year for the Bulldog Bulldogs, but to be fair, he did miss the first three games of the season, a suspension for a violation of team rules. Oh. Wow. Talk you know, about a blow by yeah. Shed's a guy who can get overshadowed by some of the other guys on the team in terms of how often guys like me talk about him. But, but a 10 minute a game off the bench guy last year who is a very important part of the team this year. Well, he, he can drive it. He drives it to pass usually, but he gets a lot of steals by going for the ball. He got an amazing steal kind of running the floor against Virginia. There's the post to post double. Well, it's not post to post, but there's the double team in the post. And Moore takes it away. They only gave up 47 to Virginia on Tuesday, and through 31 minutes today, they've only given up 36 to Butler. Cheney inside. Kicks it back out. Thompson the rebound. Cheney's got to score that. If he gets it that close to the basket, he's got to score that ball. I mean, it was a good pass out and an open three. Harris with the air ball. And look at Sasser. Here he comes. Better get back on D. And a block is the call. Malshed's just so quick. I mean, that talk about that first. It's not just the first step. He gives you the first step blow by, and then he accelerates. And that's a really nice job getting in front of Chuck Harris and shielding the shot with his body. This seems to be a very good idea on this Houston team of everybody understands their role. Everybody knows what they are being asked to do to help the team win games, and everybody does it. Well, it seems like they understand each other's value. Because one thing to ask a player to fulfill a role, but if the other players on the team don't appreciate it It's a lot harder for that player to, to keep playing hard in that role Edwards almost lost it Late screen yeah, and Cheney got called for it. you know part of that's on Cheney for not getting there faster But the ball handler has to wait Like, really, Sasser's got to wait for him to set the screen. He knows he's coming. So wait for him to set it and then go. Or refuse it and go the other way. Number four on Reggie Cheney. It is so much harder to be a big guy now than it was 20, 30 years ago. I mean, all these big guys got to get out and guard ball screens, set ball screens. They're running all over the place. And I think I asked you once, I mean, you played at Duke from 82 through 86. How many ball screens did you send for you? Zero. Zero. Was we, that wasn't part of the game in college back then. But you didn't have to guard him either. And and that's the thing. Like, all the situations you're in, fouling, they, you know, the, the amount they run. All my friends that I played, played against and with saying it's tougher. It was tougher then? No way. Houston's Marcus Sasser and Kyler Edwards would combine for just 13 points to this point in the game. You'd probably say, wow, Butler's going to be in great shape. Yep. But, you know, it's been Houston's defense. They, they've really, for, for the most part, their defense has, has made the difference in this game. Houston has held Butler to 36% field goal shooting. And the Houston is winning on the glass. Not by a lot, but they are plus four. Turnovers, though, have been a really big part of the game. Houston's turned it over nine times. Butler has coughed it up 17 times. 17 turnovers. Houston scored 23 points off those turnovers. Bolden. He was hot early. He scored the first 11 points of the game for the Bulldogs. This little set plays and a stack at the top of the key, essentially, free throw line. And just popped out to get that shot. Edwards flies in and draws the foul. I've been impressed with Jaden Taylor's defense for Butler. He's done a nice job when he's been on Marcus Sasser. Got long arms, moves his feet. He's kind of a crafty combo guard that does a good job cutting. He's got catch and shoot ability. I really like him. He's got good size. 6'4, 190, an Indiana State All Star last year. And a guy who in the two 
exhibition games for the Bulldogs. Averaged 18 and a half points per game and just kind of muscled his way into the starting lineup. Tyler Edwards could have gone a lot of places when he decided to transfer. He could have followed Chris Beard to Austin, but he chose Houston. And again, a guy who it feels like he's been playing here two or three years already. Yeah, and he fits what Houston's trying to do. One, he can score, and he can also really defend. Gross is fouled out on the perimeter. Who'd they get? Carlton. Yeah. But it, it one of the things about Kyler Edwards, I, I think Quentin Grimes and the success he had at Houston when he transferred from Kansas had to be a factor in what in what Edwards was looking at. You know, you know that Edwards wants to play in the NBA and he could follow that blueprint that Kelvin Sampson and his staff had for Quentin Grimes. Yeah, it's got to be a big selling point for coaches nowadays with all the players in the transfer portal is you play like we play or we've coached guys like you and right. look at how they've gotten better under us. Yes. Limited minutes in his first game of the season for Tremont Mark, number 12, the sophomore from Dickinson, Texas, back from a shoulder injury, but another guy who can really help. He's got great length. Great length, and a, he's just got a live body. Edwards, and a great cut there by Jawan Roberts, seeing the play develop from the baseline. Beautiful cut, beautiful find. Great hands by Sasser out of bounds to the Bulldogs. And Roberts not only made a great cut, but he caught the ball and finished it. Now he can see his man recovering out. He just kept cutting to the basket. And Kyler Edward Edwards found him. But that's not an easy catch and finish on the other side of the basket coming from the left corner. Tough fadeaway on the baseline by Bolden, but a great tip by Harris to give the Bulldogs another possession. Well, Tremont Mark is going to be a really good defender. He's got everything you want. Bolden with a 17-foot pull-up doesn't get the bounce. Gross had it, but now it belongs to the Cougars. If the officials wanted to, they'd call a foul every play in this game. They're, they're ignoring a lot just to get to the end of it. But if, if somebody said to you who were the most physical teams in America, these two would be near the top of the list. Yes, they, so? and Butler for years and years. They've, they've always been physical. And a foul from behind there. Harris reaching in. But that's not, you know, when you say that, some people say that a lot. They say, well, you call, call a foul every play. That's not true in every game. In this game, it's true. One of the subs for the Bulldogs as Kyler Edwards steps to the line. Fabian White Jr. is the only player for Houston in double figures. They got 57 points, but after him, a bunch of guys with five, six, or seven. Sasser's got nine. But they're gonna they're going to win. I mean, they're gonna win a lot of games this year, but they'll win more by holding you down than by scoring a ton of points. They're a good offensive team. But you're going to see a lot of teams in the in the 50s against Houston this year. Well, th this game is a little bit like playing against Virginia. Maybe not the one that the Virginia team that Houston just played. But Virginia in the past where it's really hard to establish any kind of offensive rhythm against Butler. I mean, it's really hard. So you're going to, for a player like Marcus Sass or Kyler Edwards, your shots aren't coming where they normally would. And you're not going to score as many points, but you still have a, a heck of a game if you play really well defensively. And for the most part, I think Houston's done that. Shed a great no-look pass and a chance for three for White. Jamal Shedd has had a really big impact on this game at both ends of the floor. He's got three steals in the ball game, But he's been so good off the dribble, drawing defenders. Excellent shot fake by Fabian White Jr. Now he's up over 20 points for this ball game. Not only caught it, but able to draw the contact by Golden and finish the play. And flex. That's a full day. <laughs> That's a career high now, 21 for White, and it's also the largest lead of the game for the Cougars. 
Assuming they win this one, they will play Wisconsin. Tomorrow in a semifinal. Looking ahead a little bit, they've got a really interesting game. December the 11th at Alabama. You can see it on ESPN2. They will play Oklahoma State December the 18th. Of course, they are in the American Conference, but this is a team that's got a chance to rack up a lot of wins this year. Yeah, they're, they're American Conference for now. They're headed to the Big 12. Correct. As soon as 2023, not definitively known Yet when that will happen, they are picked to win the league. No surprise. Coming off a Final Four season with a, enough back and a lot of great transfers. Yes, they did lose four starters, but you don't have to watch this team for long to say, wow, they got a chance to be special again. Isn't it funny in this age of conference realignment how petty all the, a lot of these leagues and, and presidents have become? You know, somebody leaves a league, and then they're not invited to the league meetings anymore. James Madison decides they're going to leave the Colonial, and they won't let him play in the conference tournament at the end of the year. Yeah, You're like, really? If you break up with me, we're not going out to dinner next week. I'm not bra I'm breaking <laughs> up with you later. <laughs> it, it, but that's the thing. Like, they yeah. talk about student-athlete welfare. Like, they, they just need to shut up. You know, it's so ridiculous because they're they'd all leave if they had the chance. And this all started, of course, with Oklahoma and Texas announcing that they were leaving the Big 12 and going to the SEC. So then the, the Big 12 regrouped and added four programs, Houston among them. Well, not the, not to go back, but it all started when the Southwest Conference broke up. Mm -hmm. That's when it all started. Hell in a handbasket. <laughs> <laughs> and the billions of dollars. Smart. Interesting. We were watching Tremont Mark at practice yesterday, and again, he's coming back from a left shoulder injury. But the release on his shot is not all the way back in terms of how high he lifts his arm. It's not all the way back to where it was before the injury. Yeah, he's got to work on that shot. I mean, he's left-handed. He shoots the ball essentially from his right chin. And Kelvin Sampson was saying, you know, his, his release was a lot higher before the shoulder injury. It's, it's lower. But he also shoots the ball on the way down, which he needs to he needs to fix, and he will. Uh, but, boy, he does everything well. Yeah. I mean, he's a really good-looking player. And you can look at it different ways, but at least at this point, as he works his way back, he's kind of the ninth player in the rotation right now for Kelvin Sampson. So what does that tell you about how good this team is? At the line, Jaden Taylor. Harris in, Thompson out. Taylor coming into this game was leading this Butler team in free throw attempts. So he can attack the basket. And he makes them once he gets there. He's shooting over 80%. And if you're Laval Jordan, you know you're bringing a team in here against some stiff competition. You know it's going to be hard. You drew Houston in the first round. But win or lose, you've got three games in three days. And it looks like they will take on Texas A&M tomorrow. And those will be a couple of hungry teams. Look at this cut. And the lay-in for Shedd. And a very nice assist for Roberts. I am a huge fan of Jamal Shedd, the way he plays. He's just a, his motor never stops revving. A great job cutting off that drive by Jair Bolden. You got to be strong with the ball against them as well. Off balance there by Mark. Look at the follow attempt by White, but he comes up empty. Taylor defended very well by Roberts, and it's numbers for Houston, and it'll be Edwards for two. Another assist for Shed. Against Butler, you know, it's not like Butler throws the ball all over the place. They forced 19 turnovers in this one, and I think forced is the is the fair word there. Butler has made 12 shots today, field goals, 12 field goals in almost 37 minutes of action. Yeah, and I don't, I'm, I don't think that that Houston has played a great offensive game. I think Kelvin Sampson would tell you that the offense didn't perform at the level that he'd like but it's awfully nice to know that when your offense isn't clicking you're not dropping shots you know your best player who's averaging 23 points a game isn't scoring at that level 
that you can hold your opponent down. You don't. You, don't, you might not have played well offensively, but you made your opponent play a lot worse. That, that's pretty good. Yeah, given the the tempo of both Virginia and Butler, kind of low possession games. But Houston shooting over 50 percent, just over 25 for 49. But, but Sasser held the nine points on the day, and they've still got a big lead. But don't you feel like when, in watching their half-court execution, they, they've had so many opportunities they could have capitalized on. I mean, th this could be worse. Yeah. I mean, it was 17 nothing. <laughs> it had the makings of much worse. Foul on Harris and Mark at the line. Yeah, it's hard to say that for Houston that you, know, you go 28 and four, go to the Final Four last year and lose Dejon Durow and Quentin Grimes and Armani Brooks, that, 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 that kind of talent, that you could be better this year. And I'm not saying they they, they are or can be. Man, they're going to be really good. Yeah. And they're going to have a chance again to really do some damage in the NCAA tournament. You know, we'll find out a lot about teams like Gonzaga, UCLA, and Duke. A big week for the Zags as they play the Bruins and the Blue Devils. How about the early season statement that like a team like Purdue, Purdue has made? I mean, everybody knew they were going to be great, but they're great. That's that? exactly what yeah. I was thinking when you were talking is Purdue. Yeah. Like, they, they are ridiculously good. It, it has the makings of a very fun year. It's an older year in college basketball, as we've talked about, with a lot of players coming back for that super senior season, and I think that's been reflected in the play in the opening couple of weeks. There's a beautiful drive and finish by Mark. And well, I think the coaching's been so good because the guys are so old. <laughs> that's like the manager who's got the, the great bullpen. Always looks like a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, having having look, you'd always rather have experience, yeah. but there are so many not that you're doing this, but there's so many value judgments that go with this idea of people saying, Well, you can't win without experience. You got yeah, these freshman teams can't win. When Duke and Kentucky did it, right. the two winningest teams in the NCAA tournament since two thousand ten are Duke and Kentucky. Our play over the game brought to you by Tommy Bahama is Fabian White Jr., a career high twenty one points. Wilmoth has played sparingly in this game. The sophomore from Chestnut Ridge, New York, knocks down to three. Did it against uh, Javier Francis, who's in for Houston, number five, six eight freshman for New Orleans, seven five wingspan. He has got some upside. He's going to be a really good player. Also getting a little run here is Robbie Armrester, a six four freshman from Atlanta, number two for Houston. Boy, Mark, he can get to his left hand, can he? A tap by Francis, but it won't go down. Mark's one of these guys. Everybody knows he's left-handed, and he's still got. He'll get there. A nearly identical score in this one is as was the case Tuesday night. Houston beat Virginia 67-47. They're up 67-48 on Butler right here, and a lot of similarities between the two games. You come in to play against Houston. You'd better be ready for a fist fight. Armbrester gets a chance to take a shot and he buries a three. Well created by Tremont Mark. He was trying to get him that shot and did it. He is playing behind a lot of good players, so his minutes uh, they won't happen that often, but he made the most of it here in this one. Now he's playing some defense, but gets called for the foul. Tremont Mark going between his legs and that right hand drive drew Ty Gross off of Armbrester and he was ready to shoot. But you could tell before he started that play that that's exactly what Tremont Mark wanted to do. So if you're Butler, you regroup, you got another game tomorrow. You're taking on Texas A&M in a consolation semifinal. And again for Laval Jordan, these are learning opportunities, but you want to put this one behind you. you don't, nobody wants to go 0 and 3 here. You want to figure out a way to pick up one, two wins if you can, no matter who you're playing, and they'll have an opportunity, as will the Aggies tomorrow, to to turn the page and give us a quick scouting report on Houston and Wisconsin. Well, first you, you just said if you're you know if you're Butler, here's what you have to do. You got a game tomorrow. If you're me, I've got two games tomorrow. And I've got to officiate three weddings as Elvis. <laughs> and then I've got a Jabberwockies show wow. tonight late. 
So that's a full day for me. It's a busy day. And the Go Fish semifinals are later on tonight. As yes, well, I'm so, fully yeah. prepared for that one. Yeah. Shot clock turned off. Spell Jabberwocky. Uh, it's actually Jabberwockies. Jabber Jabberwockies. <laughs> Wilman with another three. It's J A B B A W O C K E E Z. Nice. He's a man of many talents, America. Just ask him. <laughs> <laughs> so are the Houston Cougars. They got all kinds of talent as well. Another impressive win for Kelvin Sampson's team as they beat Butler 70 to 52. And it should be a very interesting match.